A knight is a leader who stands in the breach. We defend the faith. We protect the family. And when a need arises, we rise to meet it with charity, unity, and fraternity. Trusting in God's strength and not in our own, the Knights of Columbus will step into the breach. August 2022, levity was in the air. For the first time in three years, brother knights were able to gather together for the annual Supreme Convention. It was also the first in-person convention during the tenure of Supreme Knight Patrick Kelly. People are excited to be back in person to see each other. I think the energy level going into tonight with the concert and everything and the awards, I think people are excited about it, so I think it's going to be a good time. The celebratory mood was on full display Monday evening. The iconic Grand Old Opry House was the setting for a welcoming concert and award ceremony as the Hillbilly Thomists opened for country music legend Craig Morgan. Concert tonight is going to be a big hit. I think it's going to be a big attraction. It's nice to see the young families here. We know that Craig is a man of patriotism and a man of faith. So backstage, just a little while ago, I asked him if he would join the Knights, and he agreed. So please join me in welcoming the newest member of the Knights of Columbus, Craig Morgan. At the awards session, the 2022 International Family of the Year Award was presented to the Sewell family of St. John Paul II Council 1082 in Douglasville, Georgia. The inaugural Blessed Michael McGivney Medal was awarded to Father Matthew Keller, former state chaplain of New Mexico, who was graced by the order's founder through a recent healing. It's my hope that this medal will be a signal to all of us of continued work for the good of the order in spreading the kingdom of God and helping to sanctify and inspire all the members of the order. Bishop Mark Spaulding celebrated the opening Mass with 60 bishops, including nine cardinals, priests, deacons, and brother knights from all 13 countries where the order is located. The constant effort of Father Michael McGivney was to bring his flock together in Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, in Christ, that is our work evermore. 
go from this convention enthused, empowered, to be evangelists in Jesus Christ. The Holy Father sent an official greeting, thanking Knights for their charitable activities. His Holiness is convinced that the Knights will find creative ways to place their ingenuity, generosity, and trust in God's grace at the service of this urgent task of spiritual renewal. The Knights welcomed an international audience in proceedings that were shared live around the world in multiple languages on three Catholic networks. Living itself out. And most importantly, where we're going. The uh, procession has begun. We can see it behind us. In his annual State of the Order address, Supreme Knight Patrick Kelly highlighted the many ways the Knights of Columbus are stepping into the breach. This includes the continued defense of the unborn child. Roe versus Wade is finally gone. We now... We now have a chance to win the fight for life. Last month, the Supreme Council launched a major initiative. It's called ASAP, and it stands for Aid and Support After Pregnancy. Now, when a council donates to a pregnancy center or maternity home, the Supreme Council will match 20%. We've set an initial target of $5 million for this year alone. The best thing we can do is redouble our support for pregnancy resource centers. Day in and day out, these centers help mothers choose life. Above all else, being a knight means drawing closer to the person of Jesus Christ, our King. That's why the Order is strongly supporting the National Eucharistic Revival in the United States. Our bishops launched this effort in June, and the Supreme Council has pledged $1 million in support. Already, many councils are promoting the revival in their parishes, and I know many more will follow. The Knights' belief in Christ's real presence in the Eucharist mirrors their service to Christ, present in those they serve through countless charitable initiatives. As Catholics, we must be powerful instruments of God's love. In the last fraternal year, we donated nearly $154 million to worthy causes, both large and small. And we Knights stepped up with close to 48 million hours of volunteer service. Through Coats for Kids, we gave nearly 150,000 children the gift of warmth in the coldest months. In partnership with the Global Wheelchair Mission, we gave the gift of mobility to nearly 9,000 people. Our support for Special Olympics is a powerful sign of our unwavering defense of the dignity of the human person. Councils donated more than $3.7 million. We also stepped up in the wake of disaster. Last year, local councils gave nearly $3 million to victims of tornadoes, hurricanes, and wildfires. Whatever the crisis, we aren't just there in the short run. The nights stay for the long haul. The original sign of Knights Charity is financial protection for Catholic families. What started as Father McGivney's small mutual aid society in 1882 is now a Fortune 1000 life insurance company. Thanks to the hard work of its dedicated field agents, the Knights have a record $119 billion of life insurance in force. And in 2021, agents set a new standard of excellence, achieving the highest sales on record. Knights of Columbus Asset Advisors provides the world's broadest lineup of Catholic investment strategies that fully align with Catholic teaching and ethical investing. 
We aren't resting on our laurels. We've come a long way from the Mutual Aid Society of Father McGivney's day. Yet, while our model has changed, our mission remains the same. We serve and strengthen the Catholic family, and never have we done so much for so many. On Tuesday evening, more than 2,000 knights, delegates, their families, and guests celebrated together at the festive state's dinner. Past Supreme Knight Carl Anderson was honored for his 20 years at the helm of the Knights of Columbus. Carl, you are not only a man of many interests and skills, you are a disciple of the Lord, a man of faith and wisdom and insight, born of the Holy Spirit, a man with a capacious mind and an even more capacious heart. This evening, I am proud to join with our worthy Supreme Knight, Patrick Kelly, in honoring you, my good friend, Carl Anderson. Viva Jesus. The greatest privilege of my life has been to be entrusted by you, my brother Knights, for more than two decades with the office of Supreme Knight. To all of you, I am immensely grateful. in Ukraine was on the hearts and minds of all those gathered for the Supreme Convention. The rapid response of Brother Knights to the humanitarian crisis has developed into one of the largest and fastest relief efforts in the Order's history. The St. Michael the Archangel Award was given to State Deputy Yore Maletsky, who stepped into the breach in the best tradition of the Knights of Columbus when Russia invaded his native Ukraine. Thank you for your praise, for your sacrifices, for your support, and your work on behalf of nation fighting of its existence and its freedom. God's gift of freedom was also at the heart of remarks by keynote speaker Cardinal Timothy Dolan. You see, from the start, our founder, Blessed Michael McGivney, believed firmly in the American foundational principle that every person of whatever faith had the right to hold his head high in this republic, to freely and confidently exercise his religion. It sure is an honor and consolation to have you at our side as we defend that liberty. Wednesday's vote of Mass of the Most Holy Eucharist was celebrated by Cardinal Wilton Gregory with Bishop Andrew Cousins as homilist. I join my voice to the voice of Supreme Knight Patrick Kelly and of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. I invite you to help us renew the Church by inviting everyone into a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And on the final day of the convention, delegates, their wives, and families gathered for a memorial mass for the brother knights who had passed away during the fraternal year, including two brother knights lost in the war in Ukraine. It is fitting then that in this Eucharistic memorial, we remember our dead, our beloved dead, 
united with them through the power of Christ's death and resurrection, now it is our turn to engage the battle, to go into the breach, Before I traveled to Poland and Ukraine, I had the privilege to meet a second time with Pope Francis. We talked at length about the order's work in Ukraine. The Holy Father encouraged me, saying, go on, go on. The Holy Father was not just speaking to me. He was encouraging every night, all two million of us. Go on in defense of life. Go on in service to faith and family. Go on in our witness of charity. The days ahead will be difficult. The road will be long. So let us set out as our founder and the men before us did, giving thanks and praise to God asking for his help, because the Lord who has brought us this far will carry us still further, as together we step into the breach. Vivat Jesus.